thank you very much for being here with us today. I am Sapna Jaswani, a technical program manager at Microsoft. With me here today is my colleague and team member, Prasad Gandham. We focus on making our customers' onboarding journey to Azure easier. And today, we will focus on the same for Azure VMware solution. To kick this off, let's imagine you're in the market looking for a beautiful house, like that one. Once you've decided on the budget and by when, top of mind are some foundational considerations. Like for example, are you looking to use this house as a residence or as an office space? Are you looking to buy in the United States or elsewhere? See, responses to questions like these will inform you of the kind of plumbing requirements, electrical requirements, and material requirements for your specific use case. Like for example, whether the electricity will be 110 volts or 220 volts, where is it best to install GFCI outlets, whether the building material can be concrete or something else because the property is in an earthquake prone area. Over time, some of these considerations have become best practices and in other cases, laws that governments adhere to for their region. Using this analogy for Microsoft Azure, you've made a decision about when you want to move your workload and your budget. Fantastic, congratulations. Now come the foundational considerations. What's the best way to set up your networking stack? How do you ensure business continuity per your organization's requirement? What's the best way to monitor your workload? This is where Azure Landing Zone, previously also known as Enterprise Scale Landing Zone and referred to as ALZ or ESLZ for short, provides you with a set of scalable, compliant, secure best practices to accelerate the onboarding of your workload to Azure. Now you have an on-prem VMware environment. So we have built a set of best practices in partnership with VMware to accelerate your onboarding to Azure VMware solution, meeting you on your on-prem VMware platform. We will talk about how these best practices can be catered, tweaked, adjusted, leveraged for your unique scenario. Building on ALZ, or without it, the Azure VMware Solution Landing Zone Accelerator, which is also referred to as Enterprise Scale for Azure VMware Solution, provides you with a reference architecture and a reference implementation for your workload's unique foundational requirements to move to Azure VMware Solution. Action speaks louder than words. So with that, I will hand over to Prasad for an awesome demo that will show you just how easy it is to migrate your on-prem VMware workload to Azure VMware solution. Say goodbye to spending nights and weekends discovering this information using trial and error to make it work. And say hello to automation that sets your workload up for success and the ability to scale. With that, over to Prasad. Thank you so much, Sapna. With that being said, let's jump right into the demo. If you would like to follow along with me, please open your favorite browser and go to aka.ms AVS Accelerator. Okay, ta-da, this is the landing page for enterprise scale for Azure VMware solutions. As you are ready to start your journey for Azure VMware solutions, you might have questions around how do I plan for network, identity, and operations. No worries, Microsoft has streamlined this process for you. In this page, we have outlined the design guidelines. Let's jump into the identity. In the identity, you might have questions on how do I plan for a password reset? Great question, here it is. You might be asking a question, what is the best way for me to integrate with Active Directory? No worries, 
we got you covered there too. Like this, we are providing recommendations on run command. Now let's move to networking section where as a foundation of the house, you are looking at plumbing, electricity. It is very important to plan for your networking as well. In this section, we are covering few scenarios, networking scenarios, because every customer is different. Every one of you is different. How you are going to plan for this. If you are looking at on the screen where we are outlining, where if you're looking to do egress or ingress traffic inspection using virtual van, we have a scenario covered that with the recommendations there. The scenario two, where we are talking about using third party NVAs for the firewall and using the global reach or not using the global reach. So that is where we are recommending solution for scenario two. So third party NVAs, you're saying that we are recommending third party NVAs as part of our solution? Absolutely, Sapna. And these solutions are designed with your success in mind. And if that is through a third party NVA, then the solution will recommend that. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Moving ahead, I'm going to walk all of you through one of the scenario where we have outlined the architectural components. And in this architecture diagram, you could actually see Azure VMware solution following that enterprise scale for Azure VMware solution guidelines. And also you could see that express route connectivity to your on-prem data center. Like this, our goal is to take that architectural complexity away from you and make you that successful journey to Azure VMware solutions. With that being said, your next challenge might be planning for your operations or planning for disaster recovery. We are providing that guidelines as well here. Now let's jump right into the platform and automation DevOps section where we will actually meet you where you are when you are ready to do the deployment for Azure VMware solution. Let's jump right in where we will see building a private cloud and also we discuss about additional scenarios and modules. If you are following me so far, you can get it there by clicking on enterprise scale for Azure VMware solutions and automation section here. If not, no worries, you can go to a browser and type in aka.ms slash AVS enterprise scale repo. This is a GitHub repo you would be seeing where the landing page will have two different scenarios outlined. One is the Greenfield deployment where you would be doing an end-to-end -end Azure VMware solutions deployment for a private cloud creation. The second one is the Brownfield deployment. The Brownfield deployment is the one where some of you already have a private cloud configured, but you would like to expand your networking and you would like to expand HCX or Site Recovery Manager. We are providing you with that additional add-ons and we are providing you monitoring. Then the final section, we are providing modules around networking. Now let's look at the deployment of a Greenfield deployment. For that, please click on Getting Started. So that is where you would see the prerequisites which would be having a Azure subscription and having a request for quota. Once you have those, just scroll down a little bit where you would see Greenfield template. Click on that. It will show a ARM portal where you would see deploy to Azure button. It should open a custom deployment template for you too, like how you are seeing on the screen here. We are asking you to fill out few details. I already filled out some of these details to, as part of the demo where I'm filled, I have provided the region where I'm going to deploy it. And also we are providing a slash 22 unique and non overlapping address as it is very, very key to provide that. And as a customer, we are giving you that options as well to choose whether you would like to deploy a gem box or not and make a selection around whether you would like to deploy HCX or not. 
Similarly, same thing with site recovery manager, and you have that flexibility and power to select those. Once you fill in all these details, click on review and create button. Behind the scenes, it might take few hours to actually complete the deployment. And you could see this progress in your deployment section in your Azure portal. For demo purposes, I have already created a private cloud and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And here I built it in Canada Central and you could see that I, we have few resource groups created there. And I'm going into private cloud resource group where I'm trying to get to my private cloud and I'm going to identity. So this is where I would get my cloud admin credentials and go to Baston host or a gem box to actually connect to vCenter. Okay, now you have access to vCenter connectivity. Tada, that easy that is for all of you to get started. Some of you might be questioning, hey, I do not want the portal experience. How do I achieve this using a CI CD pipeline or using Azure DevOps? Fantastic. Let's look at building a private cloud using Terraform. If you're following with me so far, you can get there by going to the Git repo. Otherwise, in your browser, type in aka.msvacavs enterprise scale repo. And when you scroll down, click on the green field deployment. And when you scroll down on that page towards the end, you will see few options. Few options, Bicep, Arm, and Terraform. So in this case, we are gonna do the deployment using Terraform. And once you click on the Terraform link, it will show you all the detailed steps we would need to follow to do the deployment. The step one is actually cloning the repo. The way you could clone is using a git clone command, as I am showing in the screen, where you would be typing in git clone. Step two would be modifying the terraform.tfvars file. This is where how I have done the custom deployment in the previous section where we have asked you to provide the slash 22 address space and the region. You would fill out the same details around here. Once you are done filling up those details, please click on save the file. And step three, we want you to run AZ account show. This actually shows and making sure you are in the right subscription when you are ready for the deployment. Step four, we would like you to change the directory to the Terraform, how I'm doing on the screen by using change directory, getting into the Terraform folder. This is where we are actually now action starts, where we are gonna run Terraform initialize. This is the command which actually creates that working directory containing Terraform configuration files. This is the first command you run after writing a new Terraform configuration or cloning an existing one from version control. It is safe to run and this command can be run multiple times. The Once you are done with that, it should not take much longer. Next section where you would be running Terraform plan. That is where a command creates an execution plan which actually lets you see all the beautiful things which is creating behind the scenes. And you could see on my screen as well, the Baston host, the networking components, and this the whole plan kind of shows you, okay, these are all the resources are kind of getting built behind the scenes. The final thing is the Terraform apply, which is a command that actually executes the plan which we have built earlier. Again, after a few hours, you will see a private cloud created for you. Fantastic, you could see where all the private cloud resources are created. This is where we really want to meet all of you at scale when you're ready to utilize this. And explore this one in Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions. If you already have a private cloud, would like to utilize a brownfield scenario, let me show you that too, right here. here 
I am trying to create monitoring around Azure VMware solutions, which will create that action group and metric alerts for monitoring Azure VMware solutions private cloud using the automation. Part of the operations section, there are few guidelines published, and this is exactly doing what is there in our documentation. What a beauty, right? We are already talking about in the documentation, plus now we are actually providing you that using the automation where you could accelerate. If you were following, again, I'm going to open Azure monitor.bicep.json file. This is where we will ask you to fill in few parameters. One is provide the email address and provide that subscription ID, which you could get it from we'll provide private cloud, where you could actually get the ID and copy paste here. Once you do that, change the directory to bicep folder and run the following command, which is same thing there in our portal, az deployment, using the group create and this is the script which runs behind the scenes and creates that monitoring alerts for all of you once that is created which for the demo purposes i have already done this now i'll just quickly jump to azure portal where i am looking for monitor on the search bar once i open that monitor on the search bar you could see in these all six type of alerts created in there in your section that enables your monitoring using one of the modules. So Prasad, you're telling me that for Greenfield, helping our customers with architecture at scale is what we allow for and enable. And in Brownfield, this customer, our customers would not even have to re-architect. Is that right? Absolutely, Sabna, that is the goal of it, is that if you already have a great architecture in place, we are just expanding that using this uh, scenario-based approach. Wow, that is very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Now that we have covered referenced architecture and referenced implementation, you can share us the feedback to improve our documentation and automation at any time. If there is a networking scenario missing in our documentation, please provide the feedback using the feedback link shown here. If you would like to share the feedback around GitHub and Git repo, please open issues under Git issues. Thank you, Prasad. That was an awesome demo. It's impressive to see how we are helping our Greenfield customers and our Brownfield customers, meeting them using the tools they use, whether it's Terraform or whether it's Postal. Pretty impressive. Thank and thank you for reminding our customers to share with us the issues that they find as they walk on this journey with us. And then I would like to remind us that everything that you saw today is self-service. You can go to Azure Docs, docs.microsoft.com, the AKMS link that my buddy Prasad here shared with us. And you can pretty much self-serve through this architecture, through this design, through this implementation. And for those of you that are working with Microsoft account team, please do reach out to your respective account team. Ask them about enterprise scale for AVS, and they will be happy to help you run this as a workshop accelerating your unique journey to Azure VMware solution. We look forward to hearing about your successes, what worked for you, and where you would like to see more investments. And that's a wrap for today. Prasad and I would like to thank you for your time today and for joining us today. We look forward to connecting with you in the future. Thanks for the opportunity and have a great day.